morning from my sunny South Africa and happy World Financial Planning Day for 2023, where the theme is Live Your Today and Plan Your Tomorrow. I am Lalani Besaidnot, a certified financial planner, but also the Chief Executive Officer of the Financial Planning Institute. And with me, I have Nikki McDonald. Nikki, hello. Hello, Lalani. Um, I am Nikki McDonald. I am the HOD of Certification and Standards at the FPI, and we're very happy to be here and share this exciting news with you. Indeed, it's exciting. And just a little bit, if you don't know who the FPI is, a lot of people get confused with the FBI. No, it's the Financial Planning Institute of Southern Africa. We are the only licensing holder of the CFP mark in South Africa via an affiliation agreement with the Financial Planning Standards Board. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this research that we did. Now, who conducted the research and why? So the Financial Planning Standards Board, together with about 14 affiliates like FPI, globally conducted the consumer research. So what is the consumer research all about? Well, it's about the value of financial planning. So if you look at the key findings, um, and maybe before we dive into the key findings, let's just understand who was surveyed. And it was an online survey with about 15,000 global consumers around the world. So in South Africa, we looked at about 1,005 consumers all over the age of 25 years old, earning about a million um, rand per annum, or have more than 600,000 investable assets. So that is the group of consumers that we surveyed. And we focused on two distinct groups because to establish the value of financial planning, you have to look at a group who has received financial professional financial advice or have worked with, with a certified financial planner versus a group who has not ever worked with a financial planner or has ever received financial advice. And you then look at the difference to understand what is the value for somebody who has been working with a financial planner and specifically a certified financial planner. So with me, um, I'm going to ask Nikki to help me to unpack some of, of especially the myths, but maybe before we go into the myths, I will share with you four of the top key findings and you are welcome to download the document to read more details. So I'm just touching on it very high level. So clients who work with a financial planner say they are better off. So have a look at the document why they are better off. There's a lot of reasons. Then also financial planning helps people fulfill their financial needs. So we need to understand what financial needs are and how a certified financial planner actually helps you to build that golden pathway all the way up to actualization of your financial plan. Then also clients of specifically certified financial planner professionals experience the best outcomes. And also Gen Y, who is somebody who's born after the 1980s, so it's the younger next generation as they are known as, Gen Y are more likely to expect digital engagement. But Nikki, there's also a few myths that came out. So which ones do we need to bust? Yes, Lilani, and this, uh, it's, I think it's important to note that these myths are globally found and also in South Africa. Indeed. So whatever they found in the global research, specifically when it came to the myths, was also relevant here. And the first one is that financial planning is not only for the rich. I know that there is a perception out there that only rich people need financial planning, but that is absolutely not true. The second one, and this links to the Gen Y, is that financial planning is not only needed at retirement. There is much more that a financial planner can do for you. And over 9 in 10 Gen Ys who work with a CFP professional say they are better off. So it's younger people that are actually you know, needing the advice. That's and um, so it's not just for retirement. The third one is a very important one, mm. and that is the cost of financial planning. And it is shown in this um, research that the value that you gain from financial planning is so much more than what it costs you. And the fourth one is that financial planning lacks objectivity or financial planners lack objectivity is a myth out there. And this was absolutely busted because financial planners act on the best behalf of the client and absolutely. objectivity is not an issue that will stand in their way to gain 
proper financial advice. In, in fact, if you look at the Financial Planning Standards Board, but also the FPI's Code of Ethics, so all our professional members subscribe to a Code of Ethics. And within that Code of Ethics, we have eight very distinct principles that they need to adhere to, and that speaks to the fiduciary duty. So what is a fiduciary duty? Well, that is where you put your client's interest first, so it's no surprise that putting clients' interest first is one of the um, objectives that we have in there and the principles that we have. But also, you know, um, we, you spoke about the objectivity. One of those principles are that a financial planner must be objective, high levels of integrity, and always puts the client's interest first. So Nikki, yeah, just thank you for unpacking the myths for us. And, and I agree with you, you know, financial planning is not just for the rich. Um, it's for anybody at any age because financial planning is really about that holistic idea where we help you with financial management. In other words, unpacking your budget. You know, are you living um, outside your means? You know, do you have more, um, you know, expenses at the end of the month than you what, what you have money? So it's just helping you with understanding what budgeting is all about, um, understanding how to work with money. And there's also a lot of emotions now that comes with money. And this is where a financial planner helps you to say, Let's take the emotion out of the money and let's make some rational decisions when we work with money. And indeed, it's not just at retirement. Eh? And in no. fact, if you make use of financial planning or professional financial advice only at retirement, it is too late. Absolutely, Leon. You touched on financial management, but there's yeah. the other angle as well. When you're younger, you need financial planning more in the areas of estate planning. Indeed. Insuring your risks, because yes, that is your biggest yes. source of income when you're young. And as you move towards retirement and as your needs change, it is very important to have a financial planner that will walk that journey with you. Because your needs, your financial planning needs change as you grow older. So you need that person to take your hand and coach you through all the ups and downs that you're going to experience through your financial planning journey. Absolutely, and it's not just as you grow older, it's as you grow a family, you know, with children, you know, when the big five changes in life happens, you know, from yes. getting married uh, to children that's being born to unfortunately death in the family as well. And everything in between, given that's that it. your kids leave the home and all of a sudden oh, you've got some extra time, syndrome. the empty nest yes. syndrome going towards retirement. And obviously, even after retirement, because how do you manage the funds that you do have to ensure that you are not, um, you know, don't run out of money before the end of your Absolutely. life? Absolutely. And I think it's also important to emphasize that a certified financial planner not only meets the minimum regulatory standards, but they meet the um, professional standard, which means the qualification is qu on, on quite a high level. You know, for the certified financial planner you have in South Africa, you need to complete a postgraduate diploma in the specialities of financial planning, and you need to have relevant financial planning experience. And you also sit, you know, for that board exam, like you have in some of the other professions where they call it also board exams, but we call our board exam a professional competency examination. I've already mentioned that you subscribe to a code of ethics and we've got quite um, robust disciplinary regulations in place as well. Nikki, thanks for helping with, um, with me with unpacking those myths. Um, if we then look, you now, if you go through this document, we don't have enough time to go through all the details in this document, but there's very interesting information about the FPSB's value of financial planning index, but then also the um, index with uh, South Africa specifically. So something else that I really want to hone in a little bit, we spoke about the CFP professional difference. Nikki, do you maybe want to unpack that in a bit more detail? Yes, and I think this is one of the main, main points and main issues that came out of this research and something that we are really excited about. Clients who work with a CFP professional, and I'm reading this from the report because I think it's important to note that clients who work with a CFP professional are more likely to report a higher quality of life, more likely to have greater levels of financial confidence and resilience, and are more likely to be satisfied with their financial situation. And 94% of the people who are advised by yeah. a CFP professional say that they trust to have the client's best interest at heart. And I think when you look for someone to be your financial advisor, the main building block of that relationship is going to have to be trust 
and that that planner will make sure that your your client, you as the client, needs are always first in line. And I think that that is a great finding, and I think it just underscores what we already know. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, in addition to that, Lilani, 89% of clients of CFP professionals say they are likely to continue their relationship with a planner. And then they also listed five benefits mm. that um, of working with a financial planner, and then in this case, specifically a CFP. Obviously, financial well-being, peace yep. of mind, and this yep. is the emotions again. If your That's finances it. are in a good place, it's good for your mental health. The second one is better um, financial decision making confidence, mm -hmm. and that's because of the education role that we fulfill. Because but you also a lot know of what's going on in your finances, yes, and a lot of what you do with your clients is education. Understand this: how, how does that work, and so on. You can help to explain and simplify financial matters. Exactly mm -hmm. what you said. Now they feel more satisfied with their wealth, and I also think that would be because they have more control over it Indeed. and they understand what's going on and then improved financial freedom and control. And um, I think if you add all of this together, it builds into the trust that you will have in your financial planner to make sure that it acts in your best behalf. You know, this is really key finding, Shana, when we look at the top five benefits of working with a certified financial planner professional. I mean, I am a CFP professional myself, but I do have a CFP professional who's not myself. Um, and my CFP professional helps me to understand my finances and to give me that peace of mind that if anything happens to me, that I know that my family will be okay when I'm no longer here. So my certified financial planner knows exactly where everything in my house is should something happen to me. And he knows where to go, where to get my book of life. That's got all my information that if something happens to me, here's the book of life with all the information. What is my liabilities? What is my assets? Who to phone? You know, the various insurers or where the, wherever, you know, where all, all the information is. So it's really quite, and that, you know, that really gives me peace of mind. I can actually get in the car, jump in a plane, do what I need to do, knowing that should I no longer be here, uh, you know, that my family is actually taken care of. But also, you know, not that doubt when you want to, this month, maybe I want to buy something extra. It's maybe uh, not, a, not a need, but a want. And um, I go like, oh, do I really have enough? And because of his assistance, I know that whether I can or whether I should stagger what I want to do, maybe over a few months. Um, but that my own CFP professional helps me with discipline because working with money is discipline 101. So yes, there's a lot of benefits working with a certified financial planner. Now, Nikki, we spoke about Gen Y. Um, and Gen Y, you know, I always say, um, my, I've got children who's both Gen Ys, and it's not because they always ask, Mommy, why this? Mommy, why that? No, <laughs> that's not why. It's because they were born in the 1980s. So those are the young next generation. So Nikki, why, why must financial planning be different for the next generation? Can you take us through, through the maybe five ways? Yes, Lilani. And I think, um, as Lilani said, we've been seeing this. Um, in conversations with our members that the next generation mm -hmm. thinks very different, differently about financial planning mm -hmm. than the older generations did. So, so it was very interesting to see what came out of this research. And as Lelani said, there's a lot of information in the document. Oh, yeah, and right. we've also got more information in our full reports that we will be sharing over time. So keep an eye on everything that we will be releasing in future. So let's look at Generation Y. Face-to-face -face still rules with them, mm. but they need more digital engagement. Indeed. And I think that is, the, uh, that is the way life is going. I think generations coming after that is going to need even more digital it engagement. So, exactly. Knows? So it'll be, we have to change to keep up. Then generation wise, more hands-on. They want to direct invest. And some of the findings in the full report um, links to crypto. And okay. it's actually very interesting to see the fact that South Africa, specifically with this age group, mm -hmm. the fact that South African regulators are now regulating crypto yep. actually encourages them to invest in crypto because they see it as a more, um, you know, as, as an investment you, that you can actually, actually take part in. So, but we will share more of that information mm -hmm. going forward. Then 
They also prioritize investing in businesses with a purpose beyond a profit. Okay. ESG. That is the new Social generation. responsibility. Mm. This generation is much more tuned into things like that and than we and the older generations have been. But also companies that honors green investing. You yes. know, are you looking after the planet? Yes or no? So I must say it's it's quite a responsible generation coming in. It is. And it's it's exciting. It really is. Then they have higher expectations, preferring multi-channel service experience where they can interact digitally over the phone via different channels and whatever the situation might be. And they have more, and this is why I say the crypto, Gen Y has more interest in investing in novel, non-traditional asset class. So this is where crypto comes in. And I know for a fact that my children are much more open to investing in something like crypto where I am just a little bit scared of it because I do not understand it. But I, I think there's a big change and I think we need to make sure that we keep up with that as financial planners. Indeed, and, and maybe just unpacking the digital assets a little bit. So we have different types of digital assets of which crypto is, is one. There's non-fungible tokens, etc., etc. Um, so in South Africa, yes, indeed, crypto assets or digital assets is now a recognized financial product. So the Financial Sector Conduct Authority recognized that last year in October, if I recall correctly, um, but they're also honing in in South Africa, the Conduct Authority, on the DeFi's. Now, that's not your fridge in your kitchen. A DeFi is decentralized finance. And these are the crypto assets or digital assets providers that make use of technology like blockchain. Uh, you know, to mine these digital assets. So, yes, um, but do take caution that uh, any digital asset is of late. It's only about 12 months that South Africa has recognized it as a financial product and you should not enter into any financial product without proper professional financial advice, especially when investment is a little bit more risky um, because anything that is new to the market, especially your non-traditional type of asset classes, uh, you know, it comes with a higher level of risk. So please make sure, you know, the younger generation. In fact, there was a study that shows that the um, digital assets is not just for the younger generation. And there's quite a few over 50 year olds um, who has decided to invest in digital assets as well. But yeah, so, so financial planning, as we can see, is for all and not just the young generation. If we look at the myths that we have busted, uh, especially it's too late if you wait until retirement. Um, but Nikki, I wish we can go on and on because there's so much interesting information in this booklet that we will make available. So what you will see from today, the 4th of October, on World Financial Planning Day, we actually have World Financial Planning Week. You will find that we will share quite a lot more. There will be blogs as we unpack more of this information. There will be little infographics. Uh, you'll also find short little video clips that will summarize the findings in South Africa for you. So join us on World Financial Planning Day, which is today, the 4th of October, 2023. Um, watch our YouTube channels, you know, follow us on social media, but not just today, but for the rest of the week. Now, Nikki, as the head of certification and standards and the person responsible mostly for running with financial education at the Financial Planning Institute, any closing remarks from your side? Yes, Lilani, I am, we have been waiting for this report for quite some time. Um, we were very excited to be involved yes. in it from the very beginning because we wanted to see what the reaction of the South African public was. And I think if you go and read through the findings in this research report, it underscores what our members already do. Absolutely. It underscores the good work that they are doing. It underscores the value that they add to clients' lives. And what I love about the myths it is not just for the rich, it is not just for the old, it is for everybody. Absolutely. Find yourself a financial planner, professional, and get your plan in order today. But I'm going to ask Nikki one last question, if you bear with me. So Nikki, I sit today in Uppington. Where do I find a certified financial planner? You go to the FBI My Money One Two Three website. Mm -hmm. So it's mymoney123.co.za. 
You click on find a financial planner. Mm -hmm. You add your area where you are. And what you will find is a list of our professional members who are all ready to give advice to you. So you can decide who you like and you can contact that person. That's fantastic. So what you will find there at Find a Financial Planner or a financial uh, professional, you will find the full contact details. But what's quite interesting, you will find a little bit of a bio where that financial planner or advisor will tell you what services they actually specialize in. So just by going to www.fpimymoney123.coza, you can find a certified financial planner or financial advisor that can meet your tailored needs. Uh, closing remarks from my side, thank you very much for listening to us today and please visit our website and please support us on World Financial Planning Day, but also World Financial Planning Week. Until next time, goodbye. Thank you.